from New York, Pets Aloud, it's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Penn and Teller, musical group, The Breeders, and Olympic gold medalist, Summer Sanders. Plus, Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous band. And now, chlorinated for your safety, David Letterman. show folks thank you very much for dialing us up here tonight have you heard about this the department of transportation has now decided to crack down on amtrak listen to this from now on according to the department of transportation amtrak must announce all arrivals and departures as well now as all takeoffs and landings so they have <laughs> said, that's it <laughs> If you've ever watched this program before, you know that I am an acute observer of the political scene. Listen to this. Now, I turned my powers of attention to the George Bush situation, and I said to myself earlier today, you know, all of these things that he is promising to do now if he is reelected, why didn't he just do them in the first four years he was in office? Then we wouldn't be... Here's kind of an outfit, isn't it? What do you think of that? Boy, I look, uh, Paul, I look like a hitter, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to see you. How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> Real hitter. Yeah. It was announced, uh, well, earlier in the weekend. Speculation about this has been running rampant for the last month. James Baker now, I guess, is going to become George Bush's uh, new chief of staff. And in a secondary announcement, they said that Marlon Fitzwater, from now on, will be in charge of getting chicks for Bush in Switzerland. So they hold... <laughs> Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, oh man, is this our show, Bob? What a wonderful television program you're about to witness here this evening. Our old friends Penn and Teller will be joining us. Hey, I gotta come in and make the spots on my tie disappear. Hi, nice to see you. How you doing? Anything out there you'd like to drive? Well, come on in. <laughs> uh, also, the, uh, oh, oh, rock and roll excitement here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The Breeders are with us this evening. I'll give you an AM, FM radio, I'll give you floor mats, and we'll undercoat it. What do you think? Huh? Uh, also, oh, oh. Olympic gold medal winner Summer Sanders is here on the program this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, your friend Paul Schaefer. There you go. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, David, you know how I hate to do nice this. Nice to see you, Paul. How you doing, buddy? Fabulous. Well, let me help you out. Paul, you're going to be appearing live somewhere this I weekend. I hate to even no, no, mention let, it. Let's hear it. It's so show busy no. and cheap to plug a date. <laughs> you and the boys in the band. You're nice to say it, yeah. though. We're yeah. going to be in Atlanta, GA, this Saturday Atlanta, night. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. We're playing a nutty place called Chastain Park down there, opening up. Dig the opening act, the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Wow. Opening for us. Wow. We're part of their subscription. Very, very hip. It's true, actually. We're part of their subscription series. Do me a favor. Yeah. Do me a favor. Sir. Wear that shirt. Uh, 
What's that supposed to be? Ah, it's a joke. It's a little All joke right. about your shirt. But special guest Dion, the great Dion DiMucci, special guesting with us down there. Now, tonight. wait a minute. This is nothing if not eclectic. You have the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, right. yourself and us the world's guys. most dangerous band, yeah. and Dion. And Dion, yeah. It's a nutty bill. <laughs> but in the South, you know, anything goes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, have you ever, uh, well, good, I hope it's a big success. Yeah, a bi is it a big agenda, a lot Come of big down. venue? Yeah, it's a huge place. Yeah, I'll so be you, there. We need you to fill up the venue. <laughs> have you ever uh, had the experience when you've been on uh, vacation or in your own hometown where you have dinner by yourself? Oh, yeah. I you automatically feel like a dweeb when you show up at the restaurant and uh, it becomes obviously apparent that you're going to be dining by yourself. Sure alone. But you can do it. You can get through it. It's not that big a deal. How do you do it? Well, this happened to me last week. And I'm in this restaurant, I'm having dinner by myself, and a guy comes up to me. The restaurant is essentially empty. And I'm sitting there enjoying my meal, and then I realize there's going to be another party in the restaurant. Another uh, a family is having dinner, like two tables over. And a guy comes up to me, and he's a, uh, a, a Japanese-American or an American-Japanese. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? He's... He's, He's Japanese. a Japanese guy who has moved to America. Well, or I think born in this country. Born in this country, Yeah, because yeah. He, he... But of Japanese origin. But there we, you go. But so really an American. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So this guy comes up to me and he says, Oh, Mr. Letterman. And, and I'm sorry, that's really the way he talks. <laughs> it, it's not like I'm doing some cheap accent. Not a slight, oh, Mr. No. Letterman. No. No. Yeah, that was him. That was the guy. And uh, I said, Oh, how do you do? And I uh, bowed for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even stand up. I thought, well, it's easier than standing up. It went, went down. Yeah. So uh, he, he says, oh, oh, you're dining alone. And I said, yes, yes, I'm dining alone. And he says, well, and he was very gracious, this man. He said, please, come join me and my family for dinner. And I said, oh, you're too kind. I really can't do that. And he says, well, why not? And I said, well, uh, that would be an imposition. And he says, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, I don't want to impose on you. And he says, well, well I don't understand. And I said, well, I've been in imposition all my life. <laughs> and I thought, well, this will get me off the hook. And he says, no, please explain. I don't understand. And so I thought to myself, I've got to end this somehow because this could go on for days. And I just said, look, I have a personality disorder. <laughs> and the guy says, what kind? <laughs> <laughs> was his voice dubbed in or was it this no. was that a <laughs> somebody, somebody somebody dubbed in that shirt up in there. Oh, you know, hey, we're joking here. Hey, please, Gee, ladies and gentlemen, I... relax. We're just joking here. Uh, let's see, it's summertime in New York City, ladies and gentlemen, and what we like to do sometimes, take our video cameras out there and tape the ongoing tapestry of life that is the street activity of New York City. I never know how yeah. to explain oh, these. Oh, very yeah. nicely done. Hey, you understand that? And now we're going to show you some of the activities out there and also give you a little quiz. Cool. Yeah, okay. Here, here, here. Let me show you how this works. For example, the Upper West Sider, this Upper West Sider that you see here is wondering to himself, A, which way is Midtown? Uh, B, where did I park my car? C, maybe it was two shakes and one sensible dinner. <laughs> What kind? <laughs> These children are happy because A, it's a beautiful sunny day, B, they're on summer vacation, C, they have just defeated the Yankees. <laughs> Uh, this man right here can't wait until A, he gets to see a Broadway show, B, he sees the uh, Empire State Building, C, his magic hat kicks in. <clears throat> That'll be some kind of a boost there when that magic... That cleared the Hudson, ladies and gentlemen. Three points. Good. This man is looking for A, a tourist booth to get a map, a B, a policeman to get directions, C, green slacks to complete his traffic light outfit. <laughs> I love them sound effects. Sound effects make a show. In fact, if I ever teach any radio and TV classes, that'll be the first lecture I give. Sound effects make a show. Right. Very exactly. 
Uh, these people regret A, dropping a contact lens, B, losing their car keys, C, turning their backs on their picnic lunch for a split second. <laughs> Maybe we can eat with Dave. <laughs> the uh, zoo shop pictured here is uh, where A, Central Park tour begins, B, souvenirs are on sale at discount prices, C, Paul Schaefer buys all his shirts. There you go. Hey, now wait a second. <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> it just try to get a, get a hold on yourself. Uh, we're showing these people here because, uh, A, uh, these people are friends of the crew, B, they're relatives of our producer, C, we're hoping to get lots of free stuff from the Gap. <laughs> uh, sharp-eyed New Yorkers recognize this pair as, A, tourists on their way to the World Trade Center, <laughs> B, out-of-towners doing some window shopping, C, and uh, this is kind of a surprise, C, it's Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. <laughs> That's who that is. Wouldn't have recognized No, I wouldn't have either. Boy, no. I'll tell you. You get them off the silver screen, they look a little All different, don't they? Altogether different. Uh, this security guard is thrilled because he has, A, an extra long lunch hour, B, a two-week vacation coming up, C, very roomy pockets. <laughs> well, that's available now. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Take whatever you need over there. Uh, this gentleman is A, an amateur photographer, B, a retired city employee, C, 0 for 3 on studs. There we go. Okay, that's a little... We, ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful program. Penn and Teller are here, the Breeders, and uh, Olympic gold medalist Summer Sanders. Please come on back and watch the program. You got the factory air, you got the cruise control, and you got the map light. There you go. We're ready to roll. Take it or leave it, son. That's the price. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, let's see. Let's do the uh, home office here. Uh, oh, no. Let's do the uh, top ten list from the, the home office. Sometimes I get too confused. I have a personality disorder. I'm making a pretty comfortable living with it, too. Uh, <laughs> Just, you know, you find something like that, you kind of turn it to your advantage. Sure. Next it. thing you know, you're on easy street. Go with it. <laughs> uh, let's see the uh, category tonight for the big top ten list. Top ten ways uh, Bush... You know, we were looking at those... Uh, Summer Sanders brought in some of her medals. She brought in a bronze, she brought in a silver, and brought in a gold. They're beautiful. Mm. They're just... They're everything you think Olympic medals ought to be. They have, a, they have a nice feel to them, they have a nice weight, and a lovely color. Maybe and she'll bring them out tonight, and we could all look at them. I oh, guess that'd be too I, much. Oh, I don't think so, Paul. No. no. <laughs> too, 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 too big a risk of security there. I see. Now, maybe she'll bring them up. No. But it's nice because, you know, you want these kids, and essentially she's just like 19, you want them, in addition to be competing for the personal satisfaction and the glory of representing their nation, you want a little tangible, you know, something to hang on to. You know, you well, don't... These are nice. Yeah. Yeah, you oh. don't like it like you peel it back and it's got chocolate in it. You don't want... <laughs> What kind? <laughs> uh, the category tonight in the big top ten list, uh, top ten ways George Bush, now this is important, the top ten ways George Bush can still win the election. I believe Clinton now has slipped a bit in the polls, still leading George Bush comfortably. Uh, but here we have top ten ways now George Bush could still win the election. Here we go, number ten. <laughs> Bomb the living crap out of Norway, number nine. <laughs> Announce he's entering a 12-step program for recovering dweebs. Well... <laughs> I'd like to get into that my own self. Uh, number eight, start calling himself the Beducation President. Number seven. Yes, there you go. There's some heat for you. You betcha. 
Uh, number seven, invent really delicious new kind of sandwich. Well, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, number six, free crack. Number five. <laughs> number five, change war on drugs to war on Doug Henning. I don't understand that one. Number four, go around throwing up on bad guys. Number three, compose rap song paying tribute to women with big butts. There you go. Uh, number two, stop referring to James Baker as his longtime companion. And the number one way George Bush can still win the election, keep Spotted Owl in his pants. There you go. Get ready for our first guests, ladies and gentlemen. They are uh, currently appearing at the Trump Plaza down there in Atlantic City and on Showtime's 10th annual Just for Laughs comedy special this Saturday. You're dying to get in there and get it, aren't you, Beth? All right, well, come on in. It's very, it's very observant of you, very good of you. Thank you very much, Beth. I appreciate that. Telling you, having Biff around is like having the Secret Service around. You you never have to worry about a thing because right. the slightest little fallop, boom, Biff will dive on that grenade for you. Yeah. Uh, our next guest will be down there in Atlantic City, and uh, also you can see them on Showtime's 10th annual Just for Laughs comedy special, which I believe uh, debuts on Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program the the one, the only Penn and Teller. Here they are. <laughs> Hey, but that says more than $20, we'll give you a lobster. Uh, right to you. Uh, welcome back to the program. Penn and Teller is here. Penn and Teller are here. And uh, Lobsterini. Lobsterini. All right. Now, we wow, might... look at the wingspan on that boy. Is that the same one? Yeah, this is the exact we, we would never Why do a lobster? lobster switch on you. All right, thank you. Uh, not yet. Uh, you already see him do the handcuff yes. escape. Yes. And now he should do a box escape following in the footsteps of Houdini. Boo Houdini. Yeah. And this is a uh, this is a lobster trap. Mm -hmm. What we'd like you to do this is, is first really of all, what a lobster trap looks like. Lobster traps look nothing like this. <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is a TV representation of you know, a lobster okay. trap. I was hoping to blow it by you, but you're paying attention to everything. You know, I'm very excited because the last time you guys were here, and I don't know if people at home know this or should care about it. There's no reason for you to know about this. The last time these guys were on the show, for some reason. I got a brand new watch out of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> so will that happen again tonight? Something almost oh, as good. good. I can hardly wait. So what I'd like you to do is examine <laughs> this lobster and make sure he has no picks or any sort of escape given. <laughs> hit, 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 hit. Make right. sure there's like, you know, want to check. Pat him down is what you're saying? Pat him down. He'll frisk him. He assumes the position so okay, comfortable. Take him over to the car. You've pat him down. before. I feel badly because I, I have kind of an affinity for these animals, although they are mighty tasty. <laughs> Now, you have the club. Now, this one will crush and this one will cut, so be careful. Is that what they do, really? Just, yeah, they have one for cutting and one right. for crushing. All right. And just put him into the... Uh, into the lobster into, trap. Into the lobster trap. All right. This is, this on his is, back, on his... No, no, put him in so he can like, be comfortable. Right. Oh, yeah, I, I think the word trap does <laughs> suggest high comfort. And yeah, then we're going to close him up and put him in place with a uh, lobster fork. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of nice touches here tonight, boys. Now he is going to escape out of here in a minute. Okay. In exactly one minute. So I'll start my watch he's, right now. He's hanging. He's being, hey, have okay. a seat down here on the sofa. You have, an, you have an important thing to do, Dave. You're going to be the executioner here. Uh, you're going to take this string. And please don't pull it early. No. All right. But you just pull this rather close to there. You see that pin will pull out. I see. It's a, it's a oh, mechanical thing. And this thing. drops it's him into the uh, boiling water. His natural enemy, boiling <laughs> water. Natural <laughs> enemy. All right. Uh, if you see, this really is hot water. I want you to, I want you to really see this is boiling water. Yeah. And uh, Do we, we, we have, have uh, get slaw over there. We got, we got a minute going here. And we got, uh, you like a yeah. lobster bit? Plenty of wet naps. No, I'll help yourself with that. <laughs> we can love your bit here. Yeah. And we have. Are we just waiting for the water to boil? He's going he's to escape. No, I think, I think we need something more exciting on your program than watching water boil. <laughs> uh, a little bit of lemon. Can I get off the stool? No, 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 no I, please, just, please, I, I feel please like stay. Mike Douglas. I know. No, no, no. Be that way. Now. <laughs> right. We have uh, we have some drawn butter. Well, I'm here. told. I'm told now, Pen. We have one minute. Okay. Okay. So it should be. Uh, well, one minute. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll pull it then. Okay. Let's Drum let's... roll, Anton. Here we go. Pull it. Ah. Oh! Oh my God! <laughs> Oh, it's on my head. 
It's on my head. And it's the <laughs> monster. It is. It's the accelerator. How close monster. it is. Good luck in Atlantic Thank City. So Ladies and gentlemen, it's Penn and Teller. We'll be right back. Soon, you'll hear it. The best long-distance service is a... You know what we got going here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a show within a show. <laughs> Penn and Teller, very exciting. Always. Yeah. As always. And, and I'm told now, and I don't know if I should be s discussing this, Kreskin, our friend the amazing Kreskin, is suing Penn and Teller. Really? There's because, a suit. Yeah, because Penn and Teller, or I guess just one of them, claimed that Kreskin was not really magic or something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, or not magical enough. And so, so Kreskin is now upset and is suing them. So it'll be, them. oh yeah, Battle of the Magic Titans there. <laughs> uh, coming up in this half hour, we have uh, the Breeders. Hey. A nutty group. Yeah, very excited about crazy nutty group. <laughs> and uh, Summer Sanders. Now, let's see. She won the Olympic 200-meter butterfly. Got a gold medal in that. She also received a silver and a bronze in other events, and, a, and, a, and another gold for a relay. Yeah. And the, but the butterfly, have you ever tried that butterfly? I can butterfly a little. Can you really? A little bit, yeah. But you, it's impossible because you, don't, you can't use any other, it's sort of like what a lobster would do in, in the water. It's a very difficult stroke. Yes, sir. She will be out here a little bit later. Oh. Hey, hey, there's nothing wrong with this show, okay? <laughs> eh, I hate it when you babies start whining like that. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're very proud and pleased to announce a brand new segment on the program hosted by our own stage manager, Biff Henderson. The segment is called, In Case You Missed Melrose Place. Biff? In case you missed Melrose Place, Allison pretends to be Billy's girlfriend for the sake of his parents. I have a feeling their little game is gonna lead to some fireworks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sandy gets her first movie role, and then what does she do? I'll tell you what she does. She forgets about all her friends. Biff, Biff, what, what did you learn from this episode? I learned that being a snotty, young, rich kid in Southern California really sucks. <laughs> Commercial will be right back with the breeders.